every day I pledge to bring a medical professional on the show to answer your questions directly. I think it's that's crucial. There are many, many questions that obviously I'm not capable of answering. Yesterday, uh, we interviewed Dr. Anthony Fauci. That interview is uh, posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, to date, right now, over 9,400 cases confirmed across all 50 states in America, 152 deaths. Uh, we're getting all kinds of interesting information and data, not only from China, but Italy. In New York, which seems to be kind of a hotbed of activity, President Trump is going to deploy a Navy hospital ship. Uh, the governor confirmed that the USNS Comfort will probably anchor in the New York Harbor mid-April. The ship has approximately 1,000 beds and has operating rooms in New York City, where our, our uh, medical expert is uh, going to be joining us from. Uh, the rapidly rising toll has doubled uh, in about 24 to 36 hours. They have now 1,871 confirmed cases. An 11th person has died. Dr. Daniel Griffin is a New York-based infectious disease specialist at Columbia University. Dr. Griffin is chief of infectious diseases for Pro Health Care Associates, and he joins us now on our guest line here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Dr. Griffin, thank you so very much for taking time to join us, sir. We appreciate your public service. How are you? Oh, I am uh, <clears throat> doing well, tired, and, and Mike, thank you for actually the public service that all the media is doing to help get the word out, help pe keep people informed on what's going on. Thank you. I mean, we just feel a special responsibility not to alarm people, but also provide, you know, information, clarity, and, and, and that's why every single day I'm bringing someone on just like you to answer questions directly from our listeners rather than me ask about a bunch of questions. If you have a question for Dr. Griffin, 1-800-655-MIKE. You can uh, press 1 to come on air with us, press 2 to leave a voicemail message, or you can text message your comments to our MyPillow text line, which is also 800-655-6453. Dr. Griffin, let's start with some positive news. We know this came from, this originated in Wuhan, China. They have been the epicenter, and uh, finally, yesterday apparently, there's been a big milestone. They had zero uh, it, it, new cases of of COVID nineteen, that's got to they and since they started reporting in January, that's got to be encouraging, no? Oh, it is certainly encouraging, and I and I know a lot of us, myself included, are desperate for anything you know anything positive, anything that tells us that um, you can get a handle on this and there's a way to respond that makes sense. And you know, I know for a long time people were um, you know backseat or quarterbacking, whatever the expression is, saying, oh, I don't know how they're doing this, and I wouldn't do it that way. But to just see that there is someone who can succeed, who can actually get a handle on this, um, I think that gives me a lot of optimism. I, you know, we, we had a rough start here, I think some delays, but that is encouraging, and that actually is um, a little bit of, bit of clear sky, hopefully, for us uh, going forward. Perfect. Let's take some questions, um, uh, again, from our listeners who are sending um, uh, are their text messages. Uh, is it a good idea to go to re regular dental cleanings right now? Should I go to my dentist or should I hold off? Um, I would say hold off. Um, the you know the concern there is that's an inc incredibly close interaction um, between you and another individual. You're clearly within that six feet where if someone coughs or sneezes or actually just the touching. Um, and messing around your mouth. So yeah, I know actually my son yesterday was supposed to get his teeth cleaned and he surely needs them clean, but we have delayed that. You know, there's, you mentioned your son. There's a lot of, of conversation about young people not being impacted like older people. And yet yesterday, of course, big story in the New York Times as they're studying people who are infected, there's a surprisingly high number of people in sort of a 25 to 54, if you will, uh, age demographic that are being that are being hammered by this. No, I, and I'm glad you bring that up. I, you know, my my dad always has this 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 expression where he says, you know, you lie to me once and that's the last time. And I think it's really important that um, we're honest and it, it's great to reassure people, but you've got to reassure them with the truth. And, and the truth is that um, although the most the majority of the deaths, I'm going to say 80 percent of the deaths in the last study I was looking at last night occurred in older individuals. Um, unfortunately, younger individuals, they get sick. Um, and, you know, maybe one in five will get sick enough that they need to be in the hospital. 
And unfortunately, a study that we just saw um, out of China, thousands of kids um, got infected. About 40 percent of them got pneumonia. About one in every 20 kids was sick enough that they actually retire, required being in the hospital and some required being, um, you know, innovated in the intensive care unit. So I, I want to basically say, you know, yes, kids are not a special protected population. They're, they're still at risk. Fortunately, they're at much lower risk. And even if they get this, the vast majority of them are going to do really well. But we still need to be honest. We need to protect them. We need to keep them safe. Um, because, you know, when you look at statistics, it's one thing. But I tell you, if my son gets sick, that's um, that's not a statistic anymore. That's a tragedy. Dr. Daniel Griffin is our guest. He's an infectious disease specialist at Columbia University. Um, he is chief of infectious diseases for Pro Healthcare Associates. I want to dive in, Dr. Griffin, with the question that I've been hearing more than more than any other question, and that is, if you do become infected with coronavirus, if you test positive, you go through a two week or I guess, you know, complete quarantine uh, period of time, you get better, you recover, you're back to normal. Can you can you get it again and, and get all the symptoms all over again? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's several parts of that. I think the first thing is that the duration of illness. So for the time that if you get infected and become symptomatic, um, a mild case might only last two weeks. A severe case might last as long as eight weeks. So that's what we've seen now in the past few months. Once you are free of symptoms, we're actually requiring people to be tested. And actually, this is the CDC guidance and what they did in China. And actually, they have succeeded. So I'm, you know, it's hard for me to say, let's do something different here, is you make sure those people are not shedding virus, that they're not infectious anymore before they go out and potentially infect other people. Now, the nice thing that we seem to be seeing is if you get sick, um, despite there was one report out of Japan, which I don't really think has really borne out, it looks like people are at least initially and at least for a period of time immune. What I do worry about is some of the other viruses in this family, SARS-1, I'm now calling it, this being SARS-2, COVID-19, and MERS, which is another related virus. By a year out, unfortunately, those antibodies seem to have been uh, decreasing in level. So we're not sure at this point if this will be lifelong immunity, which really prioritizes uh, the vaccine or other approaches or therapeutics so that, you know, should you get infected again. But I think at least I can be optimistic here and honestly optimistic if you get it right now and get through this. We, we are not seeing people be immediately reinfected. We're seeing they actually uh, have immunity. More good news. All right, let's take some phone calls for Dr. Griffin. Ellen, welcome to the Mike Gallagher Show. You're up with Dr. Daniel Griffin. Go ahead, Ellen. Hi, Dr. Uh, Griffin. I had a question. Um, if if I uh, I was one of the people who was shopping for toilet paper to run crowds initially, now, of course, I am staying in. I'm 72. I'm not going near anyone. But if, if I do have to go to the drugstore, if I uh, get the virus, uh, I know I can be a car carrier and not have symptoms, so that's why we have to stay away from each other. But how? let's say I, I did contract it. Um, am I confident now if I stay in for a month and I don't have symptoms that I haven't gotten it? Or can you get it and then maybe two months later get the symptoms? Um, at least um, I, I can give you some reassurance here. Um, we've We've been experiencing this now since, well, November, December, so several months. And what we know is that there seems to be a window, I shouldn't say seems, there is a window of the time you're exposed to the time you get symptoms or not. So if you have an exposure and it's been 14 days, it now becomes um, incredibly unlikely. You know, I'll give you a 1% because throw a number like one in 100 people, an exceptional individual might, you know, violate this rule. But pretty much if you make it to day 14 after that exposure, you're not going to get symptoms. If you end up getting sick later, it would be because you had a later exposure. So at least we can say, and we've been um, pretty successful in doing this. I say very successful because basing this on the success in China. If you're exposed, you go 14 days, you don't get sick, um, you're good. Line two, Anthony calling 800-655-MIKE, our number for Dr. Daniel Griffin. Every day we're going to bring on an expert, a medical doctor, who can answer your questions directly about coronavirus. 800-655-MIKE is the way for you to join us. Anthony, welcome. You're, you're on with Dr. Griffin. Go right ahead with your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, real quickly, doctor, uh, my brother is going for a, a heart procedure next week. 
It's I'm sure you uh, you're aware of it. It's uh, called uh, Tavar. And yeah, I was yeah. wondering, is it safe for me and other family members to be at the hospital with him? So I will tell you that at a lot of the hospitals, um, actually the hospital where I am right now, I'm sort of jealous that Mike is in his uh, kitchen, but I'm here <laughs> in the hospital, uh, is we, we've actually basically at this hospital said no visitors. Um, and, and it's a combination of things is, is we don't know, as, as the caller just before said, some people may be in that period where they've been exposed, but they don't have symptoms. We know certain people can be exposed, can actually have an infection, but not show symptoms, but still can spread it. So we've been really trying to limit. And so what we'll do in a case like that where it's, where it's a procedure is we'll have just one person. You know, you need someone with you. And so we'll have just one person. We'll say we don't need a crowd of people. One person will be bringing that person in. One person will be bringing them home. Um, the hospitals, um, I'll say, um, you know, are, are doing the best they can to try to make sure that the hospital itself is a safe environment so that people are not getting the virus in the hospitals. And one of the steps that they're doing is really limited in the number of people that come and go to try to reduce those risks. I do think it's important, and I, I want to, again, thank you for taking time out of what I know is a very busy time for you, Dr. Griffin. It is important to look at, at the, the optimistic aspects of this. It makes sense that we're all doing our best to sort of self-isolate, to social distance, not shake hands, not be within pro close proximity with one another. But I keep seeing good news about potential vaccinations, good news about Japanese flu testing. Or, or medicines, rather, that the Japanese are developing that seem to be incredibly effective. I saw that on TV last night. Uh, it does seem to me that there are some pretty good things happening on the horizon. Now, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Mike, because, um, yeah, this is bad. This is, you know, and there's lots of bad news, but but there is good news. And so on the vaccine front, actually, uh, say a friend of mine, Peter Hotez, we've co-authored a couple books together. He's um, been before Congress. He's also a fellow bow-tie-wearing physician. <laughs> um, and he, he he had done some great work and actually was pretty close with a vaccine. And I'm hoping he can actually get the funds to finish with that because, you know, some people would like the option of a vaccine. Um, at Columbia University, my lab has rolled in. Um, I've been working with Stephen Goff, a brilliant guy, Yossi Sabo, and now we're part of the David Ho um, sort of consortium. And the, the amount of funding and amount of research that's going into therapeutics that are going to be on the horizon, rapid testing that they already have in Japan, yep. there are brilliant people being brought to this, and there is really some tremendous generosity in supporting those people. So I'm there grateful. is reason to be optimistic. There is reason to be optimistic, but be smart, be careful, be sensible. Dr. Daniel Griffin, thank you so much. You've been great. We appreciate you joining us here on the Mike Gallagher Show in the relieffactor.com studios. Welcome in, 20 past the hour, 800-655, Mike. Let's dive into all of it. Very interesting conversation last night with my some of my radio colleagues who disagree about the reaction uh, that we're doing collectively as a people. We're gonna dive into all of it, getting it, getting through it all together, you and me, fighting the good fight.